welcome back to this house of walls my name is Ashley and on this channel I love to share all things homeschooling and books and anything else that I feel like sharing today is going to be a big book haul um, yeah I haven't done a book haul since middle of September so I have a stack of 22 books here to share and talk about now, I don't include books that I have purchased and immediately read, so a lot of my like in-person book clubs, those kinds of books I buy and then immediately have to read, and then they're usually on some sort of monthly wrap-up or something like that. So I do have a couple goals for next year, one being to do either a monthly or every other month uh, book haul to just help the stack be a little bit smaller for book haul videos. I also want to be better about putting new books onto my Goodreads. I was going through this morning to just make sure I remembered the synopsis of each and every book, and there were quite a few that were not on there, so it made my TBR on Goodreads go up a little bit. So, on that note, I'm going to take a sip of coffee out of my cute little cat mug, and let's get into this. The first book that I have to talk about is to Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. This was a total, I saw it and bought it. And I did actually tab this, it's a little hard to see because I used red tabs, and tried reading it October and I just didn't have time for it so I had to go back on my shelves and I'm hoping to get to it really soon but this follows Evie who is sunshine but a little down on her luck looking for a job really needing something and a position comes up as an assistant to a villain and so she takes it um, I'm not expecting this to be deep and dark or anything like that uh, but it should be a fun ride my next book is God Killer by Hannah Kainer. This follows Kissin, who saw her whole family murdered by a fire god, and now gods are outlawed, and so she goes around killing gods until she comes to a god that she cannot kill. Um, so I have heard pretty good things about this and can't wait to get into it. My next is Kafka by the Shore. This is a translated book. And so on the back, it says that you're following Kafka and Nakata as they go on parallel odysseys um, where cats converse with people, fish tumble from the sky, a ghost-like pimp deploys a Hegel sprouting girl of the night, a forest harbors soldiers, apparently unaged since World War II. Um, this sounds very interesting. This and the next two other books were gifts from my aunt and so she read it and really enjoyed it and so shared it with me. The next book is The Star of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara. So this one, again, it's a little hard to, oh there's cat hair all over it. Um, so it sounds like there's a painting of a ballet dancer and the Soviet Union is trying to get rid of um, art and things that they don't deem good to have around. Um, but it does also say that it stretches across a century, a continent, and a striking cast of characters tied together by an obscure 19th century Russian painting. So, very interested. Then I have All My Mothers by Joanna Glenn. This sounds like you are following a woman whose parents are emotionally unavailable and not very loving and things like that. But there's no baby pictures of herself. There's no kind of any kind of stories when she was a baby. And so she takes it upon herself to try to figure out where her original birth mother is. And so it says that it is a journey spanning decades and continents um, and she meets other women who give her a different idea of motherhood so it sounds like 
there's some kind of found family and I love that. Then I have Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, which I loved. It was fantastic. I've heard this one is not as fantastic, but still really good. So I'm excited to get into this prequel and meet Viv before she retires as as a mercenary and opens the coffee shop. And so I'm interested to pick this up soon. Now the next two I picked up from Book Outlet. I was getting a bunch of books for my son and I needed to get a couple more to get free shipping. So I got book two and three, so The Toll and Thunderhead. And these are in the Scythe series, so I'll put, here's book one. I have absolutely no idea what these two are about, but I do know that Scythe is about that humanity has beat death. Nobody gets sick, nobody dies, and so eventually maybe you would like to die, or maybe people say that you should die. And a Scythe is the person that will come and kill you. So I've heard wonderful things about this trilogy and hope to read it really soon. My next book is The Lost Girls of Willowbrook by Ellen Marie Wiseman. So this I have heard talked about a lot. I have heard it's extremely gritty. Um, I'm okay with that and so we'll see. But this follows, there's twin girls, one of them disappears and her sister eventually finds out that she has been sent to an institution, Willowbrook, and so goes to look for her, but they don't know where the original sister is and think that she is that original sister and so now she is institutionalized. I think that this will be a very eye-opening, gritty, and sometimes difficult book, but can't wait to get to it. Then I have The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chakshi. So this follows, it's um, set in 1889 and it follows Severin as he is ordered to find an ancient artifact as incentive to get his inheritance. Um, so he gets together a band of, it kind of looks like some misfits, and they go looking for it. So I think that this is a YA book, which is sometimes hit or miss for me. Um, but first, I love the cover, and I've never read anything by this author before and want to check it out. My next book is the second in a duology. So this is First Frost by Sarah Addison Allen. I just finished Garden Spells by the same author and really, really enjoyed it. I have heard that this continues on following the Waverly family that you meet in the first book, who it's, it's like magical realism and it's just wonderful and I really enjoyed it. I've heard that this one isn't as fantastic as the first. The first book had a lot of growth, it had some turmoil and things that needed to be solved and taken care of in that book, and I think that this one just doesn't have that same kind of feel, but I still really want to check it out. I actually think, um, let's see, Garden Spells I did read for an in-person book club, and I think that we have decided to go on with the series, so I will be finishing this one. And I have In the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Klune. I think that, if not my favorite, one of my favorite books of the year was Under the Whispering Door, but I have heard that this one is not as good as that, which is really unfortunate. I am really enjoying this author and want to continue reading this author, so I will definitely check this out. So this sounds like that there are three robots and a human that live in this house in the woods away from civilization for a reason. They find another robot and restart him and things start to happen. So I am very interested in picking this up. The next is Ready Player One. 
I got this mostly for my teenager to read. I don't know if he's quite ready for it yet. I possibly will pick this up to read as well, if not do it as kind of like a read aloud with him, maybe. So I thought that I would include this. I did get it at a thrift store. Um, it's marked as $2.99, but I think I even got it for 40% off of that. So it was too good to pass up. But this takes place in the year 2044, where a teenager goes to a virtual utopia called Oasis. And there's lots of puzzles to solve. But when he gets his first clue, it looks like then other players are trying to kill him. So it's not quite a utopian society. Um, anyways, got this. All right, we are halfway through. <sighs> I might uh, take a sip of coffee and then let's go through the rest. From that same thrift store, I did get The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I will say, this is my now third book by this author and I haven't read her yet. So, I am putting myself on a buying band from any more of her books. I want to try the ones that I have and see if she is an author that I like. But again, this was at a thrift store. I did take the sticker off, but I think I got it for like $2, so I couldn't pass it up. This looks like it is following a woman who is notified that she has received an inheritance, but wrongfully. She is not that person, but she goes along to the funeral and realizes that there are some twists and turns happening. Uh, so, should be good. Alright, my, my next Malice by John Gwynn. Do I have book one of another series by him? Yes. Have I read it? Nope. But did I buy this anyway? Yes, I did. Um, again, this was used and so saw it, couldn't pass it up. This is book one of a four-part series, and I have heard amazing things about it. I like to go into high fantasy pretty blindly, and also I am knee-deep in a tandem read of two high fantasy books right now, and so reading the synopsis for this one just wasn't happening. But I have heard amazing things about this author and this series. Another used one that I found was When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. So I have had this one on my radar for a while and I've heard pretty good things about it. It is a wonderful feminist book about women in the 1950s who all of a sudden turn into dragons. and. So it's kind of, you don't talk about it, things like that. But it does say that it explores rage, memory, and the tyranny of forced limitation. So I'm really excited to get to this. So my last little stack of books all are from subscriptions. I guess just from two subscriptions. So I do have one here from Aardvark Books. I have since canceled my subscription. I just you know, cutting back for the holiday season, um, that was the one to go. So I do have The Roaring Days of Zora Lily by Noelle Salazar. So this is dual timeline, one set in the 1920s with a girl who is poverty stricken and things happen. And then in 2023 is the other timeline when a dress is found with a label for Zora Lily by the Smithsonian Society. And so I think that they are one to figure out who she was. Um, so I'm interested to check this out. And then I have some book of the month. I am a subscriber for book of the month. Uh, some of these though, I did, maybe not that one, maybe only one of these. I did get at a local used bookstore. They tend to have a lot of book of the month books there. And so the one that I did find recently was Upgrade by Blake Crouch. Again, do I have a book by this author that I have not read yet? Yes. Oh well. So his books are kind of sci-fi thriller. And so this follows Logan Ramsey. He comes in contact with a virus that starts making him smarter. 
Um, and so kind of it follows him going through all of that and having to figure that out. Um, so again, I want to read this author and see if his books are for me. Then I have The Kiss Curse by Aaron Sterling. I, in October, read The X-Hex, and so this is a continuation of that. You know, it, it was exactly what I was looking for at the time that I was reading it. I wanted witchy feels, but not big and deep and epic. Uh, I needed kind of a silly rom-com, and so it was perfect. And so this continues on with the original character's cousin, and yeah, I think I probably won't pick this up until next fall and continue on with it, but I'm happy to have it. My next book of the month book is The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. I have read one other book by this author, and so I've heard wonderful things about this and definitely want to check it out. So this follows June, whose mother has gone missing and she has been raised by her grandmother. But June starts hearing voices and things like that, seeing things that aren't there, and kind of thinks that she has the same fate as her mother. So it sounds like it'll have some magical realism, which is something that I am learning that I really like. I like that kind of, I mean, epic fantasies are fantastic. I love it. But the magical realism where you're not totally having to learn a different world and everything like that is kind of nice. My next book is What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. So this is turn of the century following Ines uh, from Buenos Aires and her parents are archaeologists and die and so she inherits everything along with a guardian and she takes it upon herself to go to Cairo and start figuring out what happened. It does say that it is The Mummy Meets Death on the Nile, and so it sounds fantastic. And my very last book is The Last Love Note by Emma Gray. I have not heard one bad thing about this book. I've heard it is funny and sweet and it will make you cry. Um, and so that all sounds fantastic. This follows Kate two years after the death of her husband and she still hasn't had a chance to grieve and she gets stuck in Australia and so I think finally has the time to kind of come to terms with life and what has happened so far. I can't wait. All right, we made it to the end. It's a stack. So like I said, I'm really hoping that next year I can be better about at least every other month doing a book haul. And I think that'll just help make these videos a little bit shorter. I am going to be setting my goals up for next year, one of them being to get to some of my backlisted books that are on my shelves. And so that will be coming up in a video soon. I am not going to hold up all these books. It, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> so just take my word that they are in a massive pile here on the sofa next to me. Oh wow. As always, if you like these types of videos, make sure to subscribe and like below and I will be back for more soon.